the shelf like some cereal. Yeah, cause they say that he the king like Imperial. Hey. Me, watch your game, make your play for the weekend. Then come listen and hear what Tay thinking. Him and Mike got the mic, let him speak then. Let's be real. Yeah. Let's be real. Yeah. I am not worried about what you've been talking about. What's going on, y'all? We're here with the Let's Be Real podcast. I am your co host, Michael Parham. Love me, co host Dante L. Today we have a special guest, Jamal Richardson. I appreciate it, fellas. Appreciate y'all having me here, man. And those who don't know who this guy is, he's a super trainer. One of the Maplewood legends, Nashville living legend, man. We're going to go ahead and jump in it. Let's be real. Like Dante said, man, like he said, super trainer. There's a million things we can say, say about Jamal. But before we get into your professional career, talking about your training, yeah. stuff like that, let's, I want to talk about your experience as a player. So, of course, you've been playing basketball for a long time. Let's talk about like your growth as a player from high school, college, and so on. So yeah, yes. yeah, you know, went to... Maplewood, man, you know, shout out to the Alma Mar. Of course, you know, you know, best, you know, best high school, you know, in the city. But, uh, yeah, man, played in Maplewood, graduated two thousand five. Um, so I played two years under Winston Gamble. Um, and then my last two years played in our Nate Bolnheimer. Uh then I went on to play at um Auburn University of Montgomery. I played there for three years. Um, um and I decided not to play um my last year, but um kinda just to describe my game, I was more of a throwback point guard, pass first. Um, you know, I could shoot it a little bit. Um, you know, I had a nice little handle. That was my thing. I like to, I like to dribble. You yeah. know, that was my thing. You know, I like to, you know, create and, you know, it makes be, a lot of sense. You know what I mean? So be be a little fly with it, but um, you know, I was just big on just leadership and, um, you know, just again pass first. I, I like to get assists. I get more thrill out of getting the ball to guys, you know, getting everybody involved, letting them score, and then, you know, I come and, you know, score when needed, you know what I mean? But, uh, yeah, then I went on to play, like I said, mentioned earlier, went on to play the Auburn University of Montgomery, played there for three years, and um, and then after that, had a pretty good experience there, uh, led the conference and assists my sophomore year, um, and then I was third my junior year. Uh, but then uh, decided to put my last year, man, I just kind of hit a period when I was – Kind of just fell out of love with basketball and just wasn't, you know, just when I told myself if I get to that point, I'm just going to, I'm going to fall back from mm-hmm. it. Stop you know? having fun with it, you done with it, huh? Yeah, that's it. Yeah, so, and then, um, yeah, man, and then, uh, long story short, we ended up doing what I'm doing now, you know what I mean? And it's been it's been good ever since, though. That actually leads into my next question. I was going to ask, like, what, what made you want to train and coach in the first place? And, like, what were your initial goals for yourself when you started? So, like, when you started, was it mm-hmm. I'm going to be training NBA players or was it just, like, man, I just want to help help people develop in basketball? Yeah, it was more so um, just the second part, the latter part, just wanting to help people develop. Um, you know, but funny story, man, I, I had no aspirations being a trainer at all. I was going to school to uh, – you know, study electrical computer engineering. Oh, man. Um, you know, I th- and I thought that was going to be my <laughs> career path. Yeah, you know what I mean? You're going to go put on the suit every day, huh? Right, exactly, exactly. So that was kind of what my my what my mindset, what my vision was. And um, it was actually Spence, man. Spence, shout out to Big Cuz. Uh, that's, you know, my business partner. But um, another Maplewood alum as well. Yes, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Got to keep shouting that out. But, uh, yeah, he... Um, when I told him I, when I told him that I was gonna stop playing, um, he was one of the first phone calls that I made. And at that time, he had started getting into training, and that's when All Around Game was born. Uh, so he told me what he was doing, um, and when I came back and I told him, you know, I told him really I wasn't even interested in doing it. Again, I didn't want to be a trainer. I had no thoughts or aspirations of being a trainer. Like I was still trying to find myself after right. I stopped playing. So. Uh, so he just kept being persistent, man. I could just just come come help me out, come help me out, come help me out, because he was doing these little small clinics out in Franklin, out in Franklin, uh, Tennessee. So, uh, so I was just like, man, you know what? Let me just go out here and check it out, man. That way, I can I can do it, and I ain't got to worry about it no more. And then, uh, you know, going out there, man, and fell in love with it. Fell in love. Fell in love with it, man. And just, like I said, just been rocking that ever since. I believe I went to one of them camp. Uh... Franklin little um, clinics, but uh, first time I had an encounter with you, you probably don't even remember, man. It was at the running gun camp. 
Uh, Let me see. Yeah, go, go on, enlighten me real quick. Man, we me. had uh, Coach Penny had set it up, had our stations going. Mm -hmm. And you know what station you had. You had ball. Ball on the stage, yeah, yeah. So yeah. we came over there. First thing we said, 10 count. I said, 10 count? What is that? <laughs> <laughs> That's where I lunch. So I'm saying, well, we better go get some nuggets or something. <laughs> Ten count. And he just start one, two, three, four, five, six. I said, oh, yeah. It's that work, man. That's real. That's real. That's the song. It's that work. I think Spence was there too. Yeah. Oh, Everybody mm -hmm. was there. That's like the first encounter I had with you as a trainer. That's dope. That's dope. So you got any uh, stories about the running gun camp that you enjoy? Like, oh, any man. Stories? Man, we could probably, man, we could probably spend the whole whole episode talking about that for sure but uh man i tell you probably the godly is that we, the no fouls yeah it's the one-on-one -on -one. campers i almost got to fighting with that yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's real though it's real it's gonna it's gonna make you break you it's real yeah. Oh, no yeah. fouls? Come on, man. I, I remember who the guy was. I ain't gonna say his name, though. <laughs> but I remember who I the know who it is, yo. We're gonna we'll keep that disclosed. Keep I already know. I'm already knowing, man. And, so you uh, love the godly. The godly, man. I probably, um, for sure, a couple matchups in the godly. And then, um, what's funny, man, like, I know it was one, uh, I think it was 2006. Eight, I believe. 2008, 2009, um, we had a gauntlet, you know, and, uh, you know, it was, you know how it is running, yeah. though. You know, the energy hype and everybody. Yeah, it's off the wall. You know, off the wall, man. So, you know, uh, you know, so, you know, you know, I'm hyping it up and everything, and then I just hear Spence just, he chirping. You know what I'm saying? So he just, he talking, man, you know, man, he ain't trying to get in the gauntlet, man. You ain't nothing this and the third. Yeah. So, but that's me and him, like, even, because we, you know, I call him, you know, that's my cousin by blood, but he more like a big brother to me, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying? So, um, so growing up, like, we had all these epic one-on-one -on -one battles. We fighting, and he win, I'm Hot. throwing the ball at him, all that kind of stuff, you know what I mean? So, you know, so that all that kind of came back into the air. So, you know, the whole, so then, you know, the camp got wind of it. Yeah. So everybody just hyped us into that gas. So me and him, we, we, you know, we go one-on-one. -on -one, so, you know, I get the first bucket. Uh, you know, everybody kind of just getting live, and then I tried to, you know, I tried to press up on him, hit me with a little hesitation, man. And the camp went crazy, man. I'm talking just went <laughs> crazy, man. And uh, that was, yeah, it's, it's been some classic moments though, for sure. During the definitely camp, missed that sure. camp, man. Great yeah, camp, absolutely, absolutely. While, while, while we're talking about you, uh, you training now, we done transitioning to you talking about being a professional trainer and stuff like that. Yeah, I ain't gonna lie, I've been following you for a minute. I'm a very big student of the game, and I follow Drew Hamlin, follow uh, Ryan Holland from the from the um, Lakers yeah. and stuff like that. So I'm sure. definitely always following trainers. And I remember just looking on your Instagram one day, and I just saw like you was in the gym, the 76ers facility. Yeah, and you right. was training Rob Coach. I was like, man, like, how did, like how, what happened from? Him like training folks in Nashville. Now he is in Philadelphia training the NBA professional. Yeah. So I wanted you to just talk a little bit about like how did you establish that relationship with Rob Cubs and how did that come about? Yeah, so I when I transferred uh to TSU and then when I first started, you know, started rolling with training. So I had an opportunity to meet Rob um his junior year um at TSU. Okay. Um and so um wasn't working with him at the time, but we just I was always kind of you know around the basketball team, and I was training other players at the mm -hmm. time on the team. So like Patrick Miller, okay. uh, some of those guys, and um, and then that summer, um, and then that summer Rob stayed. Uh, he ended up not going back to Chicago. He stayed here in Nashville, mm -hmm. um, and so we ended up you know connecting and you know through Pat, um, and that's how we started to formulate our relationship. Mm -hmm. um, and then from that point, man, like he had. Statistically, one of his you know best you know best mm -hmm. seasons of his of his uh, college career, I mean, senior year, and um, and then from that point, man, you know he just really entrusted me and Spence to mm -hmm. continue to work with his you know keep his development, and I think more so too just developing that brotherhood too. Mm -hmm. um, and that's the you know, thing about Rob; he's always been a, a very loyal guy, um, and he's always just believed in people. The people that has helped him get to where he is, he mm -hmm. just never deviates from that. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And so he saw um, just the consistent work that we was putting in, and he saw his game grow, saw his game developing. Just proud of him from 
you know, going from undrafted to being mm-hmm. a $63 million basketball player. Mm-hmm. You know being I mean? the only HBCU basketball yeah, exactly. player in the league right now. Yes, mm-hmm. sir. It's crazy. It's big time, man. So he, um, you know, he always, you know, very professional about what he does on and off the court. Um, and he's just a great dude overall, you know what I'm saying? So, uh, but yeah, we, are, we were able to connect in, you know, while I was at TSU. And, and we've, been, we've been family ever since, so, yeah. So I was going to ask you, uh, next, how was your first training session with the NBA player? Like, were you nervous? Were you intimidated? Did you feel like maybe you had to grow your game a little bit? Yeah, um, I wasn't nervous. Um, I say I, I say that I wasn't really nervous um, training my first NBA client. Um, I mean, going into it, man, I just felt confident about mm-hmm. my knowledge and what I knew. Uh, but then also, too, uh, going into that, I just never allowed myself to be closed off. Um, mm-hmm. So just understanding that you know my thing is I want to make sure that I'm an asset I'm bringing valuable you know insight valuable Mm -hmm. information to a player to help them grow but then also to being willing to receive feedback whether Mm -hmm. it be positive or negative Mm -hmm. because again I think it's more so having that open dialect and that communication with the player Mm -hmm. if a player doesn't you know want to particularly work on something, you got to be open to that. Mm-hmm. And then at the same time, you just can't let them feel like they can just do whatever they want to do too. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? So it's a balancing act more so. Um, but I think once you're able to kind of prove what you, if you prove what you know what you're talking about, that player can trust you. And then that's how they mm-hmm. got going. But, um, but no, I never felt nervous at all, man. I just, you know, if anything, I feel like, man, I was just prepared for the moment. I was prepared for the outcome. You know, mm-hmm. whether it was positive or negative, mm-hmm. I knew it was going to, you know, lead to, to me being better. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So if it was, if it didn't turn out well, well, I'm taking it as an opportunity to grow. I'm taking it as an opportunity to learn. Mm-hmm. Even if it turned out well, I'm still having the same approach. So right. there was really nothing to be. Take no losses, all lessons. There you go. That's it. So speaking of that, um, training the NBA guys. What was, well, not you know, NBA guys only, but, like, mm-hmm. just training, period. What was, like, one of your worst training experiences? Man, that's a, that's a really, really good question. Um, you know what, man? Honestly, I've had a few. I've had a few in regards to, I've had to kick some players out of sessions before. Um, like tell them go home? Yeah, like, yeah, like. You can't work out today. Oh, effort. Like, effort, I think just uh, mindset, energy. Um, I've had to do that. And, um, and I've, I've done that to uh, a couple pro players before. None to, you know, so I, so I kind of look at it as no matter who you are. Mm-hmm. You You're know, still a professional at the end of the day, right. too. Right, exactly. You know what I'm saying? So if I'm, if, if we come into this gym we only get this amount of time. Let's make sure we maximize that. Let's make sure we being we're 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 being the best versions of ourselves to gain and get what we want out of it. But I've had to, I've had to do that on a couple on a couple of occasions. And um, what's funny is when I've done that, uh, the pro players that I did that too, like they were kind of like, "What are you? Yeah. Like you know what I mean?" Mm-hmm. And I'm like, "Yeah, like I'm you know because." <laughs> you know, you're gonna respect like you gonna you know, you're gonna respect my time. No different than I wanna be respectful of you. If I came in and and, and I was kinda, you know, half assing in, in regards to how I my approach and, mm-hmm. and not being professional and not doing what I need to they do. You wouldn't wanna come back to you. Yeah, you wouldn't wanna come back. So I'm like, well, you're gonna treat me with that same respect. Like, we're gonna value each other's time. So right. let's make sure we do that. And so, um, but what's funny is some of those guys end up being some of my mm-hmm. best, my best friends. You know what I'm yeah. saying? But I think it was that, just that fire up on the moment. Yeah, yeah. Yo. Some people appreciate the challenge, man. I talk about that a lot of times. Like mm-hmm. any, whenever I play, like if I had a coach that really didn't just like, I mean, of course you don't have to always be yelling as a coach. But if I'm messing, if I'm messing up, let me know I'm messing up. Don't sure. don't let it just go under the rug. Like if you challenge me like that, you it's like you gain more of a, a sense of respect for somebody because you know like now this person has my best interest like this person isn't just here to make a check Absolutely. this person really wants me to develop as a player mm-hmm. so that i think that's very important um why would why are we talking about training this is something that me and him talk about all the time and this is something that i really didn't realize until after i stopped playing basketball but how important is training 
outside of like practice with your team and stuff like that? How important is it that you train on your own time and work on your own individual game? Man, super, super critical. Um, you know, it's no secret to developing your game. It's just a matter of a willingness. It's a matter of a commitment. Um, being able to sharpen your toolbox, being able to, you know, craft and mold your game outside of practice is mm-hmm. vital. I mean, Michael Jordan isn't Michael Jordan if you don't practice. Yeah. Right. Mm-hmm. You know Thanks. what I mean? And play, you know, play. You know, these players that we we look up to and we admire and we mm-hmm. are in awe and fascinated. Well, they don't become who they are if they don't apply and put the mm-hmm. necessary work in behind that. So I think it's, I think it's critical, man. I think it's critical for players to be able to take time out, you know, outside of your practice setting and, 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 and work on your game. And that's why I tell parents and players this too. You know, the one thing that I always, I always like to emphasize to them is don't be so fully dependent upon a trainer. Mm-hmm. I can't be accessible to you at all times, mm-hmm. right? And so if I'm not available or if any other trainers aren't available, what are you going to do? Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? So now you, you gotta get to, you gotta get to a point where you gotta learn how to grind by yourself. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Go outside, you know, the driveway. Get the driveway yeah. You know what I mean? Like, you know, the only trainer that I had was my dad. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Me and, too. And, <laughs> and, yeah, and, we, and I'm pretty sure we know how that. You know what I mean? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Battles within itself. Yeah, absolutely. But shout out to our pops though. Yeah. You know what I mean? Because they, you know, they did pour into us. They wanted to see us be better than them and they just they gave us what they they knew but um i think just with the the wealth of knowledge and information in today's Mm -hmm. and the resources more importantly like kids like take advantage of the opportunity Mm -hmm. to train and then you know when you're in training sessions like you know it's important and imperative that you're retaining what you're Mm -hmm. learning Mm -hmm. and then you take that and go work on it by yourself Mm -hmm. if i'm giving you if I'm giving you a cheat sheet, I'm expecting you to take that cheat sheet, look at it, overview it, work on it, boom. Next time you come back, I'm expecting you to be better. Mm-hmm. Than, and I'm always, I may only see you once that week, but if you consistently work on a skill that a skill base that I'm, I'm I'm implying and I'm giving you, when I see you again, we shouldn't be at the same level. Yeah. Either you get better or you get worse. Right. You know what I mean? So, um, but I think that's important. And then just to uh, added tidbit to that too I think it's just as equally important to play mm-hmm. like you know as much as we are pushing training you know training is mm-hmm. kind of like the rap game everybody's yeah. training right <laughs> everybody's training everybody's rapping yeah. but I think to find that balance I gotta think it's hoop. gotta hoop right I mean ain't no it wasn't no different yeah. us going to the Y mm-hmm. going to the going to Cleveland Hardman Hadley yeah. you know Timothy Park like going to all these and we just go hoop you know what I mean? So now you can, I kind of look at that like that, that, like that's your freestyle moment. Mm-hmm. Now you go out there, you try yeah. and, and create and let your mind be instinctual. You got no coach telling yeah. you what to do. Yeah, it's you. you. Yeah. That's when you're going to try that 10 count. There you go. <laughs> we'll put that 10, you'll put a little bit of that 10 count together. You know what I mean? So, um, so yeah, but I think it's, but those two things, I think you got to be able to kind of nurture and balance out but I think it's critical outside of definitely to do that outside of practice so. yeah I definitely like, every, like as soon as we end the give and go practice today that's what I told him man I was like you got all y'all on Instagram y'all follow me so I know y'all on there mm-hmm. like I, I, I tell them like these trainers people like you Drew Hanlon man they literally giving y'all the game for free yeah. like they not giving y'all entire workouts but you can go watch Darius Garland or Jason Tatum or Bradley Bill like looking whoever it is you can watch these guys and the moves that they're doing, you like, like you said, you can go outside in the backyard on your own time, do that same move a hundred times. Like, right. yeah. so it's definitely it's imperative that the young people out there that's watching this, y'all have to use our resources, man, because it's it's out there. For yeah. sure, it's definitely and, and big props to you for giving them that exposure, man, because a lot of people could be very like stingy with it, you know, posting five second clips, but you actually, you know, giving back to the community no doubt. and Appreciate helping that. everybody out. So Appreciate that. Uh, next, we want to transition to something, man. We want to talk about Darius Garland, of course. We know sure. you guys have a, a very close relationship. I remember when we were in high school, he kept telling me, you got to watch this kid at Brentwood Academy. Play. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, like, man, who is this? I'm like, man, who is this young kid? Yeah, like, talking about that he want to stay 
didn't even want to know the state. I said, okay, maybe I do need to go watch it. So, could you talk about how that relationship started and just the relationship in general? Because I know you guys are very close from what we can see. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, shout out to little bro, man. That's, yeah, he, that's, that's family. That's like blood to me. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, so our relationship kind of formulated when he was um, playing with an AU team. We all can go. Mm-hmm. Um, I had a really good relationship with his AU coach at the time. And, mm-hmm. um, and I was working with a couple of the kids prior to um, knowing about him. So mm-hmm. he would, but his coach would always call me saying, Coach, look, I got, I got this kid, Gary, Indiana, Darius Garland. I, 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 got, I got to get him to you. got to get him to you. Coach, you got to get your hands on him. I'm telling you, Coach, you're going you gonna to be the next one. So he was always just, you know, hyping him up and, and mm-hmm. speaking great things about him. So, mm-hmm. um, so actually, my first time meeting him was at the run and gun camp. He actually came to our running gun camp when he was in sixth grade. Yeah. And so a funny story with that, I'll give you the backstory on that. So funny story, when he was um when he came up, we had him in the middle school division. And mind you, he's in sixth grade. Mm-hmm. So you might like, okay, yeah, we so like that's the first time hearing about him. So we was gonna throw him on out this and my he you know, you got that seventh, eighth grade, you know. Mm-hmm. And within the first twenty minutes, we was like, Whoa, like hold on, hold on, this is Something different, <laughs> very different. So, you know what I mean? Yeah, I test, but I'm telling you, it's real. Some yeah. people just pass it. It's different, and so when we started playing five on five, it got out of hand, mm. and we was like, okay, we gotta just gonna take him up, move him up with the high school, with the high school group, and even then, sixth grade, sixth grade. But he, you know, obviously the physicality and the, the strength, and, but he still held his own at sixth grade, and some of the stuff and things he was doing, like he was throwing no looks and some of these high school kids hit him in the back of the head yeah. and I'm like he in, a, he in you know sixth grade you know what I mean so uh, so that's how we we first officially met and then I met his mom and met his mom and dad and his brothers uh, and uh, we first started working out you know his dad was you know mom and dad they there you know what I mean they, you, you probably think you, you know we was at a pre- NBA pre-draft workout like they <laughs> on top yeah they sitting there they on top they you know, locked in and paying attention. I think that's great too because I think it's a responsibility for parents to to know who you're putting, you know, your child's hands mm-hmm, in terms sure. of the development and all that. That's important. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? So you want to make sure that you know they, you know, that they're getting proper training and proper coaching. So, uh, so they would come for like the first. They came to make maybe like two workouts, and then after that second workout, it was like you got them. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? And you got them. You got them, and so. Um, yeah, man, we've been rocking out ever since, man. And so just watching him develop over the years from, you know, from high school, you know, winning four consecutive state championships and, uh, you know, prematurely, I know the season got cut short at Vanderbilt, but, but just on a, you know, on a t- mm-hmm. you know, just on the path of just doing great. And then now seeing him, you know, transition to the league and, you know, he's having a phenomenal, mm-hmm. you know, year two. I know year one was a, uh, you know, was he was baptized, he was thrown in the fire. Mm-hmm. Um, and considering all the cigar league, league too. Yeah, I was just thinking show. about that too, man. Yeah. He's so young. A lot yeah. when you posted those highlights earlier today, I was yeah. like, Man, this dude, he ain't nothing but twenty, twenty one years old. He still has time yeah. to really he ain't even in his grown man body yet. Exactly. Like, but he's mm-hmm. already, like you said, the strides he's made. Yeah. It's very, very it's impressive. impressive. Man. So he's um you know, and then, you know, just watching him not only develop and growing on in the game, but you just watching him become a young man off mm-hmm. the court, you know, just having some of the conversations that we have and, you know, we talk we you know, obviously we talk about basketball, mm-hmm. but just, you know, he starts to, you know, talk about, you know, financial literacy and mm-hmm. investing and you just seeing that part of him come out and mm-hmm. that's I feel like that's probably one of the things that I'm more, I'm really more proud to see yeah, him sure. you know, step up in that light and kind of just you know, evolving and really being aware and speaking out on just a lot of the social indu- injustices. And, you know, these are things that, you know, one thing, he's a quiet kid, but he's very observant. Like, he uh-huh. is very, very, very in tune with what's going on. So just seeing him kind of just evolve and that off the court, that's probably, you know, the, the biggest thing that I'm proud of, I'm proud of him about. So, so. Cool. I know earlier you said um, Spencer really the one that pushed you towards the training. Yeah. But would you like say he's your mentor or do you like have a mentor? Yeah, yeah. I, I yeah, man, Spencer's show, man. Um, you know, like I said, man, Spence, um, 
you know, one of the main reasons why I'm doing what I'm doing. Uh, I, even, I even include my pops too. Uh, yeah. My pops is, you know, one of my biggest mentors without question. Um, you know, we just, you know, in our family, we just have a, a rich bloodline of basketball. So he was the one that pushed me to, you know, put the rock in my hand. And and, uh, and then when I started to really pursue training, he was one of the ones that, you know, challenged me and pushed me to really, you know, to go all in for it and to really, really be great at it. You know right. what I mean? And making sure, because he was a coach too. So I think I kind of got that teaching and coaching blood through him, you know what I mean? And watching him invest himself into so many kids that, uh, you know, didn't have father figures and, you know, just yeah. going outside his way of, of really helping a lot of the kids, man. And so they kind of, I feel like, you know, him and my mom kind of just indoctrinated me, you know what I mean? So, um, so those two, man, Spence for sure, man. And, uh, I just named like a couple more. Rico Hines, I had an opportunity to mm. chop it over Rico. Um, he's one of the, you know, I call him one of the OGs of, of, of basketball development and training. Um, so he's one of the guys. Like I had a chance to talk to him on numerous occasions, man. Mm -hmm. He just uh, he keeps it real, you yeah. know what I mean? And, and that very down to earth. But mm -hmm. like you mentioned earlier, he's not one of those guys, Mike, that withholds information. Like he's always willing to share. He's always mm -hmm. willing to help younger guys in this game to, you know, to develop mm -hmm. and break through. Um, and then also Chris Johnson, he's a, um, he's also one of Darius's trainers as well. He mm -hmm. uh, works with Clutch Sports, mm -hmm. um, so he, you know, he, Braun, Ben Simmons, the whole mm -hmm. line of they going, they going to see him. You know what I <laughs> mean? So but he, 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 he's a really good dude too, man. Um, really good dude, and um, and then one more too, man. I got to throw my boy Marcus Kinsley, man. Somebody from the six yeah, yeah, from the yeah, city, man. Man. Yeah, 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 shout out, shout out, shout out to him, yeah. man. Like he's. He's one of those guys that um, I I even grew up watching mm -hmm. um, play at Glencliff, and, Glen Cliff. and were, he was one of the players that I wanted to. Um, I took a lot from his game and trying to even emulating my game. Mm -hmm. uh, but, but he's one of those guys, man. Is you know just you know just a real real thorough cat. Yeah, you know, thorough. you know what I mean. Just cut you know cut from a different cloth. And mm -hmm. um, but me and him, we have. A lot of interaction and conversations just about not only basketball but just in life and just what you know our impact what we need to do to continue to be better and like, he's one of the ones that pushes me to you know to to step outside the box think outside the box beyond basketball mm -hmm. so marcus for sure man he he's he's a real one. so yeah. shout out to him for sure marcus put me on nipsey like years like he used to talk about this dude in California yeah. like he'd been listening he was listening to Nip years before yeah. the world got put on him mm -hmm. that, was, that was a fact yeah. man dudes love him yeah real deal man mm -hmm. while we're talking about some of the the players that you've trained and stuff like that man it's crazy we were just talking about Garrison Matthews the other day but even we had Dylan Wendler on the show last episode yeah. but just speaking specifically about those players but even in general people like Robert Cubson like you said working his way from like where he was to where he is now. How yeah. does it feel as a trainer when you see guys like Garrison Matthews now start like getting starts in the NBA or Dylan working his way into consistent minutes with the Cavs? Yeah. Like, how does it feel as a trainer when you know like you've seen like empty gyms where nobody was there with no fans on nothing but them just working on their game? How does that feel for you to see them now be able to do that in front of the world? I mean it's a uh probably one of the most gratifying feelings um, that you can have as a trainer. Um, it's not even more so to highlight myself. Mm -hmm. It's more so just to elevate and uplift them mm -hmm. um, because of the work that they put in. Um, so having the opportunity to work with Dylan, my first time working with him this summer um, over the you know pandemic mm -hmm. period, and um, and you know people I think forget you know he didn't get to play last year because yeah, of his yeah. injury. Mm -hmm. So technically this is his rookie yeah, year, yeah. you know. So like he's kind of going through that same maturation process that mm -hmm. any other NBA player has to go through, just finding mm -hmm. his way and finding his niche and mm -hmm. uh, being able to develop. Well, he, he's man, done a fantastic job. I just... Been on fire lately. Been on fire he lately. two games without missing, missing the three. three. Yeah, yeah, been going crazy. And I, so I always, you know, I always stay in his ear about, man, just shoot it, be aggressive. Yeah, you know what sure. I mean? Yeah, you, you shoot too well not to shoot the ball. Man, so. he's at Belmont. He used to pass him oh, so many yeah, shots. Yeah, I'm like, let it go, yeah, man. He used, to, he, used to, he used to light up TSU all the yeah, time, man. Sure. Yeah, you know, it's all good though. You know, you know, it's all good though. We don't, you know, we don't. We'll talk about that another day. But, yeah. Uh, but yeah, like yeah, like even like Garrison, you know, Garrison, a guy. 
um, you know, coming from, you know, coming from Lipscomb and mm -hmm. then just watching him. You went to Franklin, right? Yeah, went to Franklin. Yeah, yeah, went to Franklin High School, and but just watching him go from, uh, you know, from a from a two way uh, to getting minutes, and then now he's an NBA starter. Um, so it's it's I mean, we go on and on. I mean, second league. Yes. Playing at, uh, you know, playing in Detroit, kind of the same, you know, his rookie year, same old, you know, just in regard. First off, him even getting drafted, um, second round was huge. Mm -hmm. um, and just, um, it's funny, like, having, the, I had the same conversation with him um, that I had with Jordan Bone. Mm -hmm. um, and so, going into their junior years, um, that summer we worked, I worked with, you know, both of them going into their, uh, their junior year, their summer, their summer going into their junior years. I told both of them, I said, look, like, with the with what we're going to do this summer, like, my objective for you is not for you to go back to school. You know what I mean? And that's, you know, just a mind frame. I wanted to just put them in that sense of urgency and just uh -huh. being aware of the opportunity there in front of, uh -huh. you know what I mean? Credit to both of them, and they put insurmountable hours of work in um, and then now you see those guys you know be successful at the NBA level I know jo Jordan's currently right now with you know, the NBA G League level killing it though killing, killing it though. every game yeah, consistently absolutely and you know once he gets his opportunity um, you know back in the NBA I know he's going to kill it but watching Saban watching Garrison and Rob you know Rob again Rob is another one he's been through that journey of you know fighting and clawing and finding his way and now he's one of the one of the you know more respected established role players. That's first team, man. Yeah, first team all defense, yes, man. Sir. You know what I mean? First team all defense. And he got a gun on. Yeah, you know, got it. Go. Absolutely, absolutely. So just, I think it's a blessing, man, and um, that's something I just don't, I don't take for granted at all. But more importantly, I just I always, you know, want to make sure that I'm in those guys' corners, uh, through the good and the bad. Mm -hmm. You know, it's easy to to claim them when they, you know, when they do well, but you know. I, but they know at the same time I'm, you know, we sticking with them. Whether you go, you know, you can make go ten for ten, you go zero for ten, don't matter. Like we, uh -huh. we got you, we behind you. But just seeing those guys be able to be put themselves in position to do that is probably one of the best feelings as, and gratifying feelings as a trainer, man, because you just see that work paying off. <clears> for them, so, uh, speaking of all these pro guys that you um, are in touch with, and when the pandemic hit. Mm -hmm. It was no gyms open, but yeah. speaking on how it was important for you to open up the gym and let those guys get some run during the summer. Oh, man, it was, uh, man, probably, man, I feel like by far one of the best, if not the best summers uh, for Nashville basketball community. You know what mm -hmm. I mean? Um, and this is in light of, you know, I know the pro am and rest in peace to our brother Rashid Walker. Yes, sir. Um, you know, with the with the energy and the and the and the great momentum that the Nashville Pro Am had uh, developed last season, you know, everybody was just ecstatic about mm -hmm. what was the oh, wow, it's gonna it's gonna yeah. it's gonna be as as Rashid would say, it'd be this gonna go digital, you know yeah. what I mean? And so, uh, and, and he did a you know fantastic job of, and everybody involved did a fantastic job of really elevate the Nashville program to where it is today. And it's only going to, you know, we're going to make sure we keep continue to do that. So, uh, but yeah, man, so with that kind of being out the picture, out the fold, it was, you know, it was imperative and important uh, that, you know, we try to create and find an avenue and find a way to get these guys in the gym. So uh, during the time period, uh, Josh Graves, great friend of mine, a great brother of mine, um, he is the pastor at Otter Creek Church out in Brentwood, Tennessee. Right. Um, so he had been peeping that we had been working out. Uh, we were just using some some friends of ours that had their personal, they had their own mm -hmm. personal gyms built at their homes. So we're just doing workouts there. And so he kind of seeing all the, you know, Darius coming in, Dylan coming in, Dame Jones coming in, Rob and so on and so forth. So he just out of great faith, just wanted to reach out and provide a space. He said, look, I got a gym, you know, I got a church gym. It's got that old school feel to it. Got the wooden backboards, but <laughs> it's a gym. And so us, we're like, well, look, a gym is a gym. We ain't complaining at all. We just try, you know, we want to just give these guys opportunity to play. So, um, so then we were able to, you know, myself, Adrian, Marcus Kenza, we're all um, forced together. We had um, put this together last summer anyway, but okay. um, that's how the 615 Pro Runs 
formulated. It started last year. We kind of sure did with yeah. Damian Jones and yeah, uh-huh. we were catching all them logs yeah. with DG. DG, yeah. yeah. Uh-huh. That was at Vandy. Right? At Vandy, yeah, yeah it was at Vandy. So, um, and then so we just kind of uh, once we got that space, you know, contacted Marcus and, and Adrian, and we put our heads together, and that's how the six one five Pro Run was able to develop. And that was like I said, man, for me that was probably one of the most epic. Summer, spring, yeah, summer. Was, was that going that? It was man. crazy, man. Like I feel like it was. It felt like the Nashville Pro mm-hmm. and I think just basically was. It basically, it was. Just you know? pick up, no reps. No reps, exactly. So it was just, and then just, I think the most important element was just seeing the city come together. Like mm-hmm. everybody from all walks of life, whether you were white, black, didn't matter. You can be from. The, you can be from the inner city. You can be from Brentwood. You can be from Hendersonville. Like everybody was mm-hmm. coming in just to witness and 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 and, uh, and fellowship of right. basketball. And that was to me that was the that was the highlight. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? So I used yeah. to wait for them videos to drop. <laughs> 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 oh, for sure. I was waiting for the six one five pro run yeah. video to drop. Yeah. To see what these guys did today. For sure. And it was dope too, just to be able to. Uh, even like with the with the content creators, like the videographers, mm-hmm. like you know Ryan Gibbons and yeah. Ball All Day, and uh, you know Dash, you know Dash T, you know Two T, mm-hmm. and all seeing Meg, you know Meg Cam, like seeing all those, you know creators, you know Eric Pope from uh, in the front row, like credit to them, man, for being able to even capture and being able to share those moments, you know what I mean? And because it was some crazy, it was some crazy highlights, like crazy, mm-hmm. crazy man. I'm talking just. Like people was just anticipate. You didn't know what was gonna happen. You know? The energy was just raw too, it man. Like crazy. they were really in there competing. Like For it sure. was not just like, oh, we just here to hoop. Like we like, man, we trying to get better. I want you to get better. But I'm gonna kill you today. That's yeah. The process. And I, and I knew it was real when when Leo came through and, and Young Buck came. Through. Yeah. That's when we knew. Like, we stamped. Like, you know what I'm saying? We stamped now. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Two, you know, two Nashville legends. You know, they get out of the 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 Nashville Hooper legends. You know, mm-hmm. just Ron Slay, Odell Bradley. Mm-hmm. You know. Uh, Drew Maddox, just the list goes on and on, mm-hmm. man. You know what I mean? So, um, but it was it was beautiful for the city, though. That was highlighted for sure. Yeah. All right, we're going to go ahead and transition to talking about your coaching career a little bit. I know mm-hmm. we talked a little bit about it earlier, but definitely we wanted to, I wanted to hear about your experience coaching on the Under Armour circuit and coaching, coaching women's basketball. Yeah. Yeah, 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 so. yeah. Why did you go with women instead of the boys? Well, I got a... Uh, Got to blame Spence again, man. Spence, <laughs> Spence, you know, he, he, he got me in the training. And he also got me in, in the girl in coaching girls basketball. And, Spence, uh, I don't mean to cut you off. Spence, yeah. uh, he coached my cousin too, Tangela Crenshaw. Uh, Tangela yeah. Crenshaw, yeah, yeah. And she was, uh, and Tangela was on the very first. They was cold. team. Mm-hmm. She 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 was a part of the original team. That that was his. It was it was Spence. Brian Collins, shout out to Coach Penny mm-hmm. and uh, Coach Brandon Locker, shout out to him as well. Uh, but Tangela was a part of that team. And I remember, man, uh, I went to go. I went to go watch them play. I wasn't coaching at the time. Mm-hmm. I just went to support. And man, I remember they had the the reversible jerseys with the with the Sharpie marker. Like, just, <laughs> yeah. You know what I mean? And she got yeah, Tangela, man. Tangela, was, she was she was yeah, a killer. She was oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 I think Keyshawn James. They had a. Uh, yeah. she, I think she went in the mm-hmm. Morton Murray State. So they had a. They had a squad, but. Um, but yeah, Spence got me into it, man. I was. Originally start. I started off coaching boys, um, and then I kind of just took a little break from it. Um, so he wanted to, our boys program, because our boys program was we had a good was a good solid program, but boys basketball was kind of just. It was different from girls because, players just want to go play. For so many different teams, mm-hmm. you know what I mean. And so we kind of got to a point where we couldn't consistently get players come to practice, and so we just like, you know what, we're just gonna do away with our boys program. So we made sure we found places for our kids to go play, mm-hmm. but we just really started locking in on the girl side because our girl side, the girl side was really growing exponentially. It was growing quick, so getting very successful too. Very successful, so it was growing fast. So he was. Like, cuz, look, look, cuz, like, look, man, I know you used to coaching boys, but look, you know, you, I'm telling you, you're going to really, really enjoy coaching girls basketball. And I'm thinking, like, nah, because I, I know my coaches say I coach. Yeah. I'm, I'm intense. Like, I'm yeah. high energy. I'm intense. Like, 
if I get to yelling at one of them, they might cry. Like I was thinking, <laughs> they, I had so many different thoughts going through my mm -hmm. head. So, um, so eventually, you know, he ended up just, I don't know, man, cuz just got to get the gab. He just ended up finessing me and uh, getting me to come out there and coach. Mm -hmm. And just so, uh, so I coached my first uh, girls team in 2016, uh, in which we went, we ended up winning four championship tournaments. And I think we ended up going like our record was like, 38 and I think 38 and four for the, for the year. Um, and then came back the following year and I played in this open open league called um, ASGR. It's called All-Star Girls Report League. It was one of the top leagues in the country at that time. And then we ended up winning the national championship. Mm -hmm. um, and so we had a fantastic year. And then over, over time, man, we the name started getting, you know, really getting out there. Team be right, team be right, team mm -hmm. be right. Um, so then we... Ended up getting the Adidas sponsorship for one year, um, and then we ended up um, our two teams came in third place. Um, they placed third place in the in the Adidas Gauntlet League, mm -hmm. and then uh, then we transitioned to Under Armour, um, and then from Under Armour we just been rocking with them ever since. And so it's been you know they've been number great to us, and um, but it's just. That's how I got into it, man. And yeah. um, it, it was it was cool though. It yeah, was cool. I rocked I out though. You did yeah. your thing while you was there. Yeah, sure. it was cool, man. So I enjoyed it, man. And uh, I still kind of I'm still involved with the program just in regards to kind of mm -hmm. just like you know kind of just being you know behind the scenes and just mm -hmm. helping out whenever I need to. But mm -hmm. uh, but yeah, man. I mean, just to see more importantly, I think the most important thing just to see the amount of girls that we've helped put in school. Mm -hmm. um, you know that's. That's 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 how you measure your your success is, you know, making you know putting these girls in position to go play at the next level and then just giving them an opportunity to be able to just take it from there. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? So, so. Man, Maplewood got a awesome girl team right now. Oh, they do. Yeah. They is cold. Shout out to them. They just won that region championship too. Yeah, yeah. yeah. They so, lost. Did they, did they play uh, East again? Yeah. yeah. They, they, they lost the East in the district. Time, yeah. Yeah. yeah, they yeah. beat them by twenty in the regular season. Yeah, that's crazy. I swear they got some of like the best guards I've seen for yeah. Maple Girls in a long time. In a yeah. long time, they hooping. And so three, uh, three of the three of those players ended up they played in our program. So Rose okay. Morrow, she's uh, cold. Ty mm -hmm. Gardner, yep. and Dariana. Uh, yeah, Dar big Dariana. That's a big tall girl. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, uh, so again, just you know, again, you know, them coming through our program, but then now you see them just blossom and grow, and you know they doing their thing on. You know, on the high school circuit and in East too. I mean, we got a couple. We got a mm -hmm. lot of girls on the East East High School uh, pro girls program that play in the, within our program as well. And mm -hmm. um, you know, we got great friends with Kyle Upton, his sister. Yeah, and, you know, play his sister uh, play with us. Uh, Kaya Upton, uh, Kaya she played in TSU, right TSU, right right TSU right now doing her thing. So um, yeah, man, it's just you know, we we just kind of just you know, we we kind of just touching all over, man. You know, yeah, team be right. You know, is 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 here to stay and. Uh, yeah, we're going to just keep building, man. That's it. You know what I mean? That's what's well, up. While we're talking about uh, AAU, this is something me and him talk about a lot. I remember I watched a documentary a couple of years ago on Netflix mm -hmm. called At All Costs, and it was about um, like the AAU circuit and mm -hmm. stuff like that. And it really shifted my focus on like how important, like not to say high school basketball is not important. It's very important. But how, how important of a role does AAU play in the, the maturation of a player and like their process of wanting to play at the next level mm -hmm. and, and you know get that exposure and stuff like that compared to high school. I think it's I me. Mean, I think it's vital. I think a you, um, you you you're, you're going to play against the best of the best. Mm -hmm. um, you know, in high school you, I know we all can attest to this. I know we had games where we can kind of look at it. Yeah. Like, <laughs> we gonna chill. We gonna say no schools. Right, yeah. right, 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 right. Yeah, we you know we gonna chill. We gonna kind of relax, take this game off, but. Um, AAU is a is a is a gut check. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like me personally, when I played, I never forget. I had the opportunity to play against Louis Williams, mm -hmm. uh, Lou Will when he played uh, for Georgia Stars. Mm -hmm. And that was that. <laughs> that, that, that's that, that that says it all right there. But coming out of that after that game was an eye opening for me. Mm -hmm. Like playing in. Nashville and playing it just in Middle Tennessee, like it really opened my eyes to I don't know, it's some it's okay. some real deal, you know what I mean? So, um and, and 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 you get a 
a, a, a different perspective playing AAU. It's kind of like iron sharp as iron, right? Mm-hmm. Like you got to be able to at some point, if you're dominating or if you're playing well at one level, you got to be challenged to see where do I where do I mark? Where do I stand against? this level of competition mm-hmm. and it, that ought to give you a, bar, a barometer to let you know okay I played against the number five team in the country we lose by 10 so I'm not that far off but I gotta do a little bit more mm-hmm. cause I know they going they looking at it man we just only beat this team by 10 mm-hmm. you know but they gonna keep working too mm-hmm. so it's almost kind of like you, it's a good it's a good mark and an opportunity for you to uh, to be able to kind of see where you stand I know and you kind of get some bad rap in regards to. I know a lot of coaches, especially a lot of high school coaches, do not like, like AAU, AAU basketball. Yeah. I met with coach didn't like AAU ball. Yeah. yeah. He told us he made us, made us soft. <laughs> <laughs> he said, he said, he said man, y'all okay with losing, y'all soft. Yeah. yeah. And, I, I, and I, I think, in my personal opinion, I think it's important for like high school basketball and AAU basketball, particularly the coaches. I think if you can create a healthy relationship because both are needed. Mm-hmm. I don't think one is more important mm-hmm. than the other. For sure. Because um, I feel like both is, you know, both are needed. I think obviously AAU gives you just more opportunity to gain exposure mm-hmm. and things to that degree. But um, if both sides can have a, a healthy and, and consistent communication and relationship, mm-hmm. I think most importantly, it should benefit the kid at, yeah, at the end sure. of the day. Because mm-hmm. I know there's a battle on the riff of High school coaches don't like what AAU coaches do. AAU coaches can't stand yeah. how much control high school coaches have. And I think we kind of just forget about, well, hold on. Um, it's about the kids. It's about the kids. Yeah. You know what yeah. I mean? Like, sure. if, if if you're coaching and and I got a son and and my son is, I you know, got the opportunity to play for you. You you have a great established program. I know he plays for you in high school. Well, I'm not looking at it as, okay, well, we're going to kind of favor this way, favor this way. Like, I'm expecting the two of you for the responsibility for my son Mm -hmm. to put him in the best position for his development. Mm -hmm. So the two of you got to make sure that y'all on the same page so that way my son can can get the best opportunity. Now, obviously the kid got to do his part. Mm -hmm. He got to make sure he working and grinding. But if I'm trusting you to coach him and elevate him, I'm trusting you to coach him and elevate him, but both of y'all on the same page, well, now instead of my son being here, my son is here. You know Mm -hmm. what I mean? So... Um, but it's it's critical. I think AAU is is very very vital, um, and and it's it's a it's a difference because I think AAU to me technically is tougher, and the reason why I say that is because you go in you're going into every game playing with a, top guys, the playing against top guys, and then you're going blinded because you don't know a lot about teams. Yeah, for sure. So there is no you don't get time to. You don't get time to scout. Unless you're playing like a super big guy, but you're not always going against like a top five player or nothing like Absolutely. that. Absolutely. So, but yeah, a lot of the guys, depending on what circuit you're playing on, what tournaments you're playing in, right. most of the guys, especially once you get to those, if you're in like fifth or sixth grade, it might not be that competitive. If you start getting a ninth, tenth grade, most of these guys are out here. They want a scholarship just like you yeah. want a scholarship, so they about to go at your neck the entire game. So, Absolutely. Do you, think, do you think the... The play style is different at all? Do you think like how high school a high school game looks is a lot different from like what an AAU game looks Oh, completely, like? for sure. Um, yeah, I will say that now there are some schools that um, you have that kind of, you know, emulate like a, a AAU play style, you know, just, you know, the pace. You know, like prime example, like a Cane Ridge or mm-hmm. East or a Pearl. Like they, you know, they up-tempo, get up and down and things like that. But it's was structured up, mm-hmm. you know, so... Um, I think, you know, again, AAU, you're you're just liable. You're liable to see so many different players and so many different styles of play. Um, you kind of, and then I think it's just tougher to prepare for that because you don't get a lot of practice time. You don't get time to really scout. You don't get time to really break down mm-hmm. your opponent. If you play, you win at 11, you don't have to wait. You got to wait about two or three hours. You're going to play again at yeah, you 4 o'clock. Walk, you don't walk through you don't walk, the hotel. Like the hotel. <laughs> right. You know what I mean? And so it's a little, it's a it's a different element of how you have it. And it's a different way you got to coach too. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? You got to be able to, um, to really, really, really adjust more quicker on the fly mm-hmm. than you would as a, in high school where you have time. You know tendencies. You know um, strengths, weaknesses. So you got time to kind of really dissect.
I mean, so it's a different, uh, it's a different style. And I think you know, AAU is a lot faster, of course. I think it's just mm -hmm. a faster pace. And then, you know, I, I just catch a lot of high school teams. They run a lot of zone um, from the high schools that I watch play mm -hmm. run quite a bit of zone, but. Um, AAU is mostly mine. It's mostly a showcase mine. at the end of the day. That's yeah. what I tell people, man. When it comes to AAU, like that's why like I think AAU is so important as far as like the exposure. Like you said, high school basketball is very important as well. Mm -hmm. But like during the high school season, of course they have scouts and stuff, but they're most college coaches, they're in season as well. So they don't just have time to just exactly. go watch kids. But in AAU in the summertime it's it's July. I don't have a lot to do. Yeah. All of the best kids from the southern or northern, wherever region, they could be from everywhere. They're going to be in a gym for one weekend, and I can walk on any court in here and watch players all night. I mean, it's, I, that's why I, mean, I think it's very important. I just wanted to get your opinion for sure. on that for sure. Um, let's stay on AAU for a while. Um, Nashville, man, mm -hmm. we got so much. I feel like we got a lot of talent in Nashville. Yeah, absolutely. 30 AAU teams. That's what I'm saying. We got 30 AAU teams. Last mm -hmm. powerhouse uh, AAU team we had was Team Nashville, Coach Battle. Coach Battle, yeah. Yep. Corn, Darius Thompson, yep. all those guys. Tay Tay, Jamonte Graham, mm -hmm. all those guys. Mm -hmm. What do you think, what do you believe we have to do to come together in Nashville and form that powerhouse again? Yeah. I feel like we could do it. I, yeah, I, I'm with you, man. I totally agree. Um, and I think it the, the the reference to Team Nashville is a prime example of what happens when you can centralize. And not saying that you can't have other AAU programs because mm -hmm. they're needed, but it's got to be... That's the top dog. The top dog. You got to have... That's a, our select team. There you go. You got to have a, a, a program established to where if you want to get... The you know the, the 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 premier opportunity to get exposure and we gotta have that. I think it's gotta be a, a hierarchy. I think it's gotta be that that type of system put in place. And it's, again, it's no diss or no disrespect to you know other programs and things to that degree. But it's just it's hard to establish them. Like you said, you got thirty different programs and all the best players or all the dispersed. pieces are dispersed amongst so many teams and it's just hard to do uh so i think just if, if having finding a way to maybe recreate that that model that team nashville you know that coach battle and coach brandon um was able to 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 put together and that and that's and that's one of the most legendary teams and you teams that nashville's ever had like some of the legends man like some of the to have those players that were let's just call it what it is that were unknown not on the, not on the, you know, not on the national name, national just recognition, and they were knocking off Big top teams. dogs, pros Florida, like Florida Rams. I never forget. Yeah, Casey Hill, yeah. Casey yeah. Hill, like yeah, like and 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 and, and like but oh, and you know they're playing against McDonald All Americans, mm -hmm. you know former pros right now just currently playing. Like that team was, well, it was put together. You had a, they didn't have necessarily all the best talent, but they had the right talent that fit that the fit that mold in battle and battle. Coach Brooks did a, a fantastic job, man, of, of putting that team together. Battle did a, a hell of a job of coaching those guys up and, and going into the mind frame of like, we gonna put Nashville on the map, but we gonna let everybody know, like, man, we 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 tough, we scrappy, we some dogs and we play the right way and we're gonna establish and, and let everybody know this is what Nashville basketball has to offer. And that I think it can be done. Um, and I just look at it from, think about it from this perspective. When you got a Darius Garland, a Jordan Bone, a Bo Hodges, you got James Wiseman, all are kind of just in within that similar, you know, class. They're having to go out of town to play AAU. You got Brandon yeah. Miller, that's, he's got to go to St. Louis to go play with Brad Bill. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? And Jalen Jones, he, he's going to go play AOT. Now, yeah. You know what I mean? So, like, that to me is more, you know, a, a more of a wake up call. Like we got a lot of talent here. We got to learn how to. We got to find a way to, to unify and keep it in house. You know, so kind of look at it like what what you know what NYBA is doing. I mean NYBA there, I probably say is one of the premier programs in the country in regards to, you know, being from you know being from from the city, being from Nashville. But they you know, really pre created a national name, a, na a national recognition to be able to just get guys noticed and things to that degree. But um, I think that's important. I think I'm glad you mentioned that because it's, 
you know, Nashville, we got a lot of great things going on here. I think people are way, way more aware of what we have mm -hmm. going on than, than in the past. And, like, but now, how do we harness that? I think we got too many Chiefs and not enough Indians. Everybody yeah. wants to be on the forefront. Everybody wants to claim the glory and the shine. And, uh, and you just messing up the kids, kids at the end of the day. That's, that's what it's about. At the end of the day, it ain't about who the best coach in the field. I mean, we got amazing coaches everywhere. Right. So it's about, like you said, man, getting all of that talent, giving these kids a, a platform to shine and, like, put our city on the map compared yeah. to, like you said, now we got to disperse these kids. You go play in Atlanta. You go drive to St. Louis when mm -hmm. we got talent here and we can just put it together. And just, and just to add to that, too, I think also um, understanding that everything can't come together, like, under one program. But if I got a kid that is better than what my program projects for him to be, like, I can't be selfish and yeah, keep him to him myself. Sure. Like, let me send him. I'm going to send him to you because I know you play EYBL. That's probably what he needs to take that next step in his development. I'm not going to be selfish and hold him back and I'm playing, you know, in the tournament. I'm playing the A game. I'm playing USBA. Yeah. Like, that's, that's, that does him no good. So let me – take my pride out the way and take my ego out the way and let me focus on the betterment of the kid, I'm going to put him in your hands. I'm going to put him in your hands because you guys can take him to a whole other level. You know what I'm saying? So, for sure. All right, while we're still talking about kids at the end of the day, I'm very big. We've talked before in the past on developing the youth. So, if you... Yeah. So, if I have a I have a person that's 10, 15, they playing, they want to play basketball, what's some advice that you have for them? Like to like help them develop themselves and have put them on a trajectory where they could be successful in basketball. What's the advice you have for them? Yeah, man. Um, probably my rule number one is have fun. Um, if you don't, you know, you don't love it, if you don't, you know, even may like it, you know, but um, you'll get to a point that if it really matters to you, you'll fall in love with it. If you fall in love with it, I feel like you have fun with it. Mm -hmm. um, you know, it's a, I know it's a lot of influence. It's a lot of, you know, just a lot of that comes with this generation. Mm -hmm. You know, we got a lot of attention. It's easy to be, you know, to 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 be recognized. And um, but don't let those things take away the joy, take away the love of the game. Um, mm -hmm. And and secondly, I would probably say I give you three things. Secondly, run your own race. Mm -hmm. You know, one of the hardest things to do is in in not just basketball, but in life is. Play the comparison game. Yeah, watching you know, so other people. Watching other people. You know what I mean? You can't get so enamored with trying to catch this person, trying to catch this person. Um, you got to just stay focused on you. I feel like you put those blinders on and you really lock in on yourself and focus on yourself. That'll help you to elevate, evolve, and then you're not being as so centered on just having to catch or having to have a mark of, I gotta get here, but what if you don't get there? Mm. That does that you know? Does that deem you as a failure? No, yeah. you know what I mean. So I think you just gotta learn how to put those blinders on and focus on yourself. And then last thing um, is 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 study, study basketball. I know um, a lot of kids, you know, they want to work on that dribble move, they want to work on that step back, and want to work on, you know, but study basketball. Learn how to play up here. Learn how to play with your mind, because that's Learn how to play with your mind is going to help you make the game efficient. It's going to help make the game easy. Mm -hmm. And then you'll be able to really, really learn how to control games and put yourself and your team in positions of success. Um, so, man, watch. Study, you know, watch games. Watch high school games. Watch college games. You know, watch watch the old throwback games. Mm -hmm. Go watch the 85 Bulls, you know, when, when Mike was playing. Go watch, you know, Kenny Anderson, Steve Nash, and... You know, you know, watch Kenny the Jet, like watch those guys. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean, and, and and be you know, be a student of the game, like know the history of the game. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean, and I feel like those at least imply, you know, applying those three things can can help you help kids, you know, be better for sure. I like the I like to watch guys like Cassius Winston, like yeah. not athletic but just mm -hmm. crafty, know the game, know mm -hmm. the angles of the game. That's the type of guys I like to watch. But I got um in your career. Your training career. Mm -hmm. What was the moment that you knew, like, oh man, I can make a living off this? Um, uh, two. I probably say one. 
when Rob signed his 63 million dollar 63 contract and then when Darius and Jordan got drafted and that's when it was that's when I knew like you know I got I really like I'm here you know what I'm saying like I really am a part of this you know what I mean so that to me was like that was the eye opening for me so to, to see where we started with Rob and then for him to go from undrafted to 63 plus million to work with Darius from sixth grade to becoming the top five pick in the league to Jordan Bone starting with him seventh grade watching him get drafted that was the in the second round. Right. Like, I remember yeah, he was, draft. He was, at the end he didn't think he was going to get drafted. drafted. He broke down. Yep. You know I mean? and, and, and seeing that and being in those moments was like that's when me and Spence knew like yeah this is we doing what we supposed to like we're doing exactly what God called us to do. Like we're supposed to be doing this. You know what I'm saying? So that's when that's when we know. For sure. For sure. sure. Yeah. All right, we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna move away a little bit from the, the training stuff, your professional career and stuff like that. We're gonna put you on the spot, man. All right, okay. We have, we have okay. this question for you. We Maplewood alone, so I mean, Okay, yeah, I yeah, like, yeah. I'm yeah. a little well versed, you know, with the history of our school and stuff. Like I try to pay my respects to the guys that came before like us or even the guys after us so we class of 2014 your class of 05 Five, yep. mm -hmm. so I mean I feel like you pretty well versed because I know you've seen the guys before and I know you've seen the guys after you Maplewood all time starting lineup you got five players to pick no bench players no role players no nothing I need five stars see yeah, right? see, man, I, I, I see this like you know like this this right here is a, is a, is a very 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 tough question um Man, that's hard. I'm not gonna even lie. That's super tough. I'm gonna probably go. I'm gonna go position by position. So my starting one, mm, and I know I can't pick two. I gotta pick one. So I gotta go. I gotta be biased. I gotta shout out Jonathan Whitworth because he's a dog. But I gotta go. My boy Ronald Bubba Taylor, my backcourt teammate, because um, he was, you know, Bubba was different. He, he was he was real different. So I got to start him at the one. At the two, you man. can't add yourself in if you want to. Yeah, I, yeah, I could. Yeah, I, I could. I could. Yeah, I could. But I, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a, I got you know. I got to keep it real. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I feel like you know. Let's be real. Like, man, you know, be, you know, that's the name. You know, that's the name of the pie. So um, I got to go above for sure at the one. At the two. I'm gonna probably have to go. At the two, I'm gonna have to go with Wimp. So Wimp was, a, a Wimp played with, he played with Jonathan Whitworth, mm -hmm. Eric Pillow. He, I think he played with Spence as well. Mm -hmm. Wimp was, yeah, he had, he, he was, he was, a, he was a bucket. Mm -hmm. Like he, you know, to, he had had the, had the club, had the handle, athletic. Um, so Wimp was, he was nice. I gotta go, go with him at the two. At the three, then it's, this probably gonna be the hard part right here. I mean, at the three. I know my three. <laughs> I, I, it's only right, man. This this little bro, this little bro. Shout out to him. I know he, had, you know, he had Butler doing his thing. I gotta go with Bo Hodges, man. You know what I'm saying? I feel like if, if you don't have Bo Hodges in your yeah, list, you wild, you're wild, wild, and that's just you know what I mean. He, you know the the you know the. the I ain't gonna lie. First time I saw somebody told me they was telling me about Bo. I hadn't mm -hmm. seen him play, so it's crazy, man. We missed Bo by a year. So when we were seniors, he was a freshman, but he was playing at a private school. Private, so he didn't yeah. play with us. Did, yeah. So, I mean, they had told me about him. They was like, man, if he would have played with us last year, he would be cold. Man, I went to go watch him yeah, play. Bro, 40. They, yeah. threw, they threw him a ooh. This man took out like Superman. I said, yeah, yeah sure. we definitely could have used that last year, man. So yeah, we sure. definitely got to throw Bo in. I don't know, man. I feel like, man, you know, for him to deliver the – the first state championship in history in, history in Maplewood and, and you know, Maplewood second was like 20, 20, 20 some years, years you, know, yeah. uh, before, you know, when yeah. Pearl won and, and for him to do that, you know, for those guys to do that, but, but Bo, you know, Bo being an anchor, you know, like, look, if you ain't got Bo in your top five, then you, you tripping, you had tripping, you know yeah. what I'm saying, big time, got to, you know, he legend, and, you know, he definitely, he must have been an ROTC or something, <laughs> yeah, 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 that's right, <laughs> that's right, you know what I'm saying, a couple culinary arts, you know what I'm saying, yeah. chilling, you know what I mean, but, uh, you yeah, definitely got to put a little bow in there. He doing his thing at Butler too. So shout out to him, man. You know that's fam. So, 
Um, so I got got him in my three. At the four spot, you know, man, that's, that's tough too. I mean, you know, if we if we if we gonna go. There's a McDonald's guy in there somewhere. Hmm. Man, at the four, at the four, at the four. Who gonna put it at the four, man? I mean. Mm, that's kind of tough. I'm not gonna lie. Let me let me skip the four. I got I got I got let me skip the four spot at the five though. I gotta go with my my other teammate Barry Gardner. You know, big big six nine. You know what I mean? He said he was that's my you know red protection. You know, mm -hmm. red protection. He could shoot it a little bit. Um, six you know, nine, six nine, six nine, six nine. Yeah, he was athletic with it. Yeah. Okay. So yeah, he was. He was athletic with. It. I think it, I don't know if y'all saw him play. He nah, I didn't. Man, him. it's a guy that that played in the pro am. Said he went to Maplewood. Super athletic guy. He used to wear the braid to the back. Tory Pelham. Yeah. Tory Pelham. I thought about putting him in my fold, but um, I mean, yeah, you go Tory. I feel like even Robert Wade. You put That's what I was talking about. Yeah. Uh, cause him, cause Tory and Robert kind of Tory was kind of similar to Robert. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Um, super athletic, so I might I might have to coin toss that one, man. Um, I didn't see Tory play. Yeah, Tory is high. Yeah, Robert though, though for sure. Yeah, yeah I'm gonna yeah. probably yeah, I'm gonna probably you know what I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna flip it though. I'm gonna probably go my fourth spot. I probably go Terrence Kennedy. He played. Uh, I played with him my freshman year. That was uh, Spencer's. Senior year, mm -hmm. um, but he was man super solid. You know what I'm saying? Like athletic, could shoot the three, mm -hmm. uh, but he just knew his role. You know what I mean? So I'm a, I'm a, I'm gonna go with him at the four. So, but I mean that, that's that's tough, man. I mean nah, that we coming off the bench. I mean I, you know I can come off the bench. You got you know Michael <laughs> Blivens, you got Rob yeah, Way, you got sure. like Free. I mean we. Can, uh, 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 Tory, you know Jimmy Fryer. So I mean, the list goes on and on, mm -hmm. man. But that's a, I mean, if I had to pick five, that would, that would probably be my all time. That ain't an easy question to answer. That's tough, man. Do so y'all remember um, Curlin? I don't know if y'all remember Curlin. Mm -hmm. Ain't sound for me. He was he was he was nice. He was nice. I think he played with he played with Robert, but he was older though. Mm, okay. Yeah, but okay. his name was Corlew. I don't remember his first name. Big point guard. Smooth. Smooth. Okay. How, how tall was he? Man, he had to be like six, six, four, six, three. Mm, he was big. Sound familiar. Smooth guy. You play though. Play. I just remember my dad. We used to go to all the Maplewood games. His name was Corlew, man. Dang. He could sound familiar, man. I, ain't, I, ain't I might look him up. I might have looked him up. Yeah, might have looked him up. I might look him up for sure. Yeah. All right, transitioning to another tough question, man. We know at the end of the day, point guards, that's your specialty, man. Between yeah. Darius, Marcus Fister, I mean, every, I'm glad my boy Kevin McClain hooked up with you. Yeah, yeah, you know, for sure. Man. Shout out to Kev, man. Shout out so, to Marcus, for sure. Man, if you, had to, if you had to name your top five guards in the NBA right now, which I don't think this is very easy to answer either. Who's, who's your top five guards? Hold right on. Let's, we taking out small fours that play point guard? We yeah, talking about pure, just pure point, pure guard. point guard. No Ben Simmons, okay. no LeBron, nothing like that. Yeah. All right. Got to go in no particular order. Chris Paul. For so. sure. Dame Lillard. For so. sure. Steph Curry. I'm not going to put Kyrie in because Kyrie's a two to me. Mm. I think he's a two. So you put Harden in? I put Harden in. I think I I put, I gotta put Harden in uh, for four, and fifth fifth. I'm trying to make sure I cover my ground. So it's Chris Paul, Steph, Dame, Harden. That's a tough question, man. Y'all put me on the spot, man. Y'all put me in the high school. I'm trying not to give you. No, I want it from you. Let me I'm see. trying to give you no suggestions or nothing. Yeah, I got I to look. I got a guy. This guy likes Kyle Lowry for some reason. Kyle Lowry. Like Kyle Lowry. Kyle Lowry is dog. He's he he solid. He's he a dog. I don't top five. Kyle he's solid. Like, I didn't say he was top five. <laughs> I don't but he like, love him, though. Yeah. 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 He's he he tough, though. He do he's what he do. He's tough. I got to give him that. He is tough. He's a pit bull. He's a pit bull. My fifth man, I'm going to probably, let me see. Um. 
So we, we can't do like no Lucas, no No Lucas, no, no, no that, just pure. No LeBron's. Does James really should I count James? James Harden. I don't know. He's do y'all really want me to count James? He but he well, he's led James. the NBA in assists yeah, and he's I, at, and he's playing the point guard now for I the for the next. Okay. He's so. small. He's not like six eight. He's what six four. Yeah. So I definitely yeah. I would count him. You know what, man? You know I'm I'm, I'm gonna throw Kyrie in there, man. I mean that's his skill wise, man. I just feel like Kyrie, his skill is just like not even everybody always talking about the handles, but his game in general yeah. from the mid range, like. The mid range shot is one of the hardest shots to guard. You don't know if he's going to the rim, he's stopping on the dime. Like he's easily. I have him regarded. Yeah, I might. I don't let me get y'all thoughts on this. I have him regarded as the second best skill. Well, the second best skill player in the NBA right now behind Kevin Durant. Behind Kevin Durant. Yeah. The second best skill player. I, honestly, I yeah. I don't know. I don't think I can argue with. Just, and just from what can pure, he do though? He can do almost everything. Everything. And to me, I have him as one of the top five skilled players of all time. For sure. I, I let I, you you get you get no arguments from me because like you said, I mean he can finish. He can I'm like Kyrie literally he can get to any spot on the floor. You can't make him uncomfortable. How do you make Kyrie uncomfortable? I think he's a I think he's a blend of AI and, and Kobe. Kobe. Yeah. He do. I mean, Dude, turnarounds. Nasty. I'm sorry, man. Like he's six two doing turnarounds. Okay, crazy. Like, like posting. Man, he posted a clay. Clay six six. 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 I'm just saying, With man. Good defense. Yeah, and and and, and best finish. Me to me, best finish of all time. Like the what? Of all time. Yo. Know, the best finisher. He's of all time. crafty, like, man, bro. How he finished, like with you know, ambidextry angles and using the rim. Oh man, he made a left hand layup. On the three one comeback, yeah, that's <laughs> right. Draymond, I swear the ball touched like the, the tip top. of the man. I said, "What?" Crazy man, I'm telling you, yeah. I'm gonna I'm put yeah, I'm gonna put Kyrie at five. I'm this top five point guard. So man, we say all that battle, and then he only fifth. But I right. yeah, yeah, I put so, him. Cause there's some other stuff. It's playmaking. I, I've always like. I mean, he just he's a killer. Then he's not out there to like. Pass the ball and stuff like that. So. How, how how close is Jamal Murray? Oh, he's close. He's yeah. He he's I I probably put him. Jamal Murray's probably like second tier. You know what I mean? I put him on that second tier. So I got you know put the likes of him. Um, you know the Trey Youngs and those guys. You know like yeah he you know Trey Youngs a bucket, but uh, that's what I'm saying, man. Like this the point guard position now is so it's so tough mm-hmm. and every I mean, night. It's a fight. It's a fight, man. Like, and then now you look at, you know, like the DGs, the Java Ranch, the Mellow Balls, man. Like, Ella Mellow Ball, man. Hey, man, listen. Yeah, he might be listen. top five in a few years. Yeah. Yeah, I would listen, man. 6'6", six, six, doing what he doing. His ability, his, his ability to pass, his maturity is just... Look easy. But make it look too easy. He's doing Different. what we thought his brother was going to do. Exactly. I hate that comparison, though. Their games have always been so different. Like, yeah. Lonzo is literally like one of the most unselfish basketball players I've ever But he also has some of the best natural passing ability that Absolutely. I've seen from a player. And he's had that since he was in high school. For sure. And, I mean, he has I – mean, obviously, he's not doing with LaMelo. Like, he's not a, a good of a shooter. But he has improved as a shooter. He definitely has some – some other areas he could grow, like finishing and stuff like that. But Lamelo is definitely yeah, little bro's like, doing his thing. Yeah, man, so, yeah. So, yeah, he scored that he scored that ball too, man. So good thing Charlotte started him because they. <laughs> I didn't understand. Yeah. Like this a lottery pick, and yeah. he coming off the bench. Yeah. Like they yeah. just know who he's backing up. He this guy loves Terry. Terry Rozier, Terry. Terry, come on this now. Look, Jeremy, what was that? Twenty seventeen, twenty sixteen. Now it was. That's no, about twenty twenty seventeen, twenty eighteen. Mm-hmm. Was he not? He was. Saying I was Terry saying Rozier, at that Rozier. moment. He said Terry Rozier at that, that moment. Time. The year Kyrie went down, he said Terry Rozier was a top twenty point guard in the NBA that year. At that mm-hmm. moment, I can, I can give you that. When top, he was top, starting, top twenty point guard. I can give you that for sure. Come on, I can, yeah, when he was starting, Scary I can give you that. Terry Big did. boy threes in the clutch. Yeah, I ain't gonna lie. I watched. I watched oh, him. Man. I watched him. Yeah, for whatever reason, man, he just he be lighting up Cleveland, man. He, he just, <laughs> you know, went for forty. Went for forty a couple yeah. times, and I, and I seen it. I seen it live in HD. I'm like, nah, 
He different. Mm-hmm. Scary Terry, yeah, he, Come on, he's now. a bucket. Thank you. Yeah, Scary Terry's a bucket. Thank man. you. I got to get it to him. We're going to do an episode regarding this stuff anyway. <laughs> so I'm going to have my Skip Bayless and uh, Shannon Sharp facts for you. Yeah, that, that is. Yeah. But, yeah, I mean, that was definitely a tough question. I definitely top five guard. It's such a guard-driven league. Like, we had to exile, like, the people like LeBron and Ben Simmons and Luka and stuff like that. So, mm-hmm. yeah. not a not a question that's easy to answer. And we're going to move on to our final question. We know this. I, I got a feeling, especially once the last dance came out, I saw where you oh, yeah, stood. Yeah, yeah, but I have, to, I have to frame the question and ask. I don't know the answer already. For sure. Tell the people, man, who, who's your goal? Who's the greatest on the team? MJ, man. Yeah, you my not, guy, MJ, man. Hold on, hold on. Hold on. Let's rephrase the question. We're going to ask it in two, two different ways. Okay. Who's the best basketball player of all time? The best basketball player of all time. And you're going to ask, who's the greatest? The best of all time? Like, what's, what's, what are we quantifying? Like, what's the criteria for best? Are we talking skill? We're talking, talking skill, rings, uh, accolades, all of it. We're putting all of it into perspective. <sighs> the best basketball player? I, I'm going to say LeBron, just from from totality of what he's done and how he's made guys like better from a from a pure basketball standpoint. Mm-hmm. I'm gonna I'm say I'm gonna say LeBron, but my goal is Michael Jordan. Why? For sure. Why? Well I think one, I think the fact that how Mike's influence on the game, like he he Expand. globalized, yeah, yeah, he globalized, for sure. for sure. he globalized he was the, game. the first international um, athlete that was like that. Yeah, you know what I mean. And I just think too, uh, in aspect of like his 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 his, his willingness and his demeanor in regards to just being cutthroat to win, mm-hmm, and sure. and and really turning that franchise from nothing what, from nothing to being just. Like the Beatles, like being like rock stars, mm-hmm. you know what I mean? Um, but I just I appreciate I, I appreciate Jordan's game, man. I just think his the, the reason why he's my goal is because of his mental, um, the flu game, the you know hitting that last shot against Bob, you know Byron Russell, mm-hmm. the moments that he's had in 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 those situations, like the way that he just found a way to not only will himself, but to find ways to will his team mm-hmm. to overcome, you know, mediocrity and overcome, you know, complacency. And, uh, and, and, and that was just, to me, man, that, that, I watching him play and watching how he was just, he was just cutthroat. Mm-hmm. And, and that's why I love Kobe so much, because I feel like Kobe kind of just, yeah, just really, in it, you know, really emulated, emulated Mike, you know what I mean? So, um, he's my greatest of all time, man. I just, and I hate having that conversation because I, it's, just, it's just errors, man. And, and it's tough to to say what one player would do or what mm-hmm. one player wouldn't do. Yeah. Um, you know, just being a fan of basketball, I just I like to appreciate yeah. the, the talent for what yeah. it is right yeah. in and there. You know stop I mean? comparing the generations. Yeah, got yeah. to, got to. I mean, because it, it's a, it's a it's a never ending conversation. Right. You yeah. know what I mean? And I hate like when they discredit to say, well, if Brian played in. You know, in the Jordan era, yeah, and he wouldn't have. I'm like, look, it's, you got to realize LeBron is six nine, two hundred something pounds, bro. Yeah, like, yeah. Let's, let's, and he's a he's a machine. Danny, like, just, Danny Ames survived in that area, so yeah. I'm pretty sure yeah, that was right. Yeah, exactly. exactly. You know what I mean? So you so can't bad. so you can't discredit guys because the league has become more offensive friendly. Mm. You can't discredit them and say they you know they wouldn't make they wouldn't have made it in that area. Mm. But, like, you, well, you don't know that. You know what I mean? And uh, and then truthfully, I mean. This era, this generation of basketball skill wise is better than basketball back then. Mm-hmm. I mean, it's just Kevin Garnett, like, like maybe three weeks ago, he said, like, man, I don't think any of the guards from the nineteen eighties could play yeah, now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sixth yeah, I mean, grade kids going to work out with Jamal. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. you know, what I mean, like, could I? Could you imagine uh, if Kyrie was isolated against a? Uh, you know, just whoever, you know, yeah. Joe Dumars, John Starks. And this is, again, this is no disrespect it's to those guys. It's the game. It's the evolution. It's the evolution of the game. And so I just don't like to take, I don't like to take away from each era. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? So, so 
It's definitely that era played a part into what the game looks today. like today. Exactly. But I definitely I mean we get into these debates all the time. Like we would go coaching, we playing like we were playing on Adidas Junior Gauntlet for a little bit. So we know we're very young coaches compared to like a lot of those guys or you know like late thirties, early forties, mm-hmm. and they're big Jordan guys. So we're talking about eras and stuff like that. And my my biggest thing when we have the debate of who the goat is, it's not necessarily about who's better. A lot of times, it's the discrediting of LeBron mm-hmm. compared to like me discrediting Jordan. A lot of times, like I mean, I have like some rebuttals when we when we like put them head to head. But most of my time, it's not about what Jordan didn't do. It's about what LeBron has done. But a lot of doing. what is doing about to do, and like a lot of like the people from that the previous era refused to give him his flowers for right. that. Absolutely. And, and it's like, I just, that's where the disconnect for me comes in. Because like you said, we're talking about a bunch of what ifs at the end of the day. We don't yeah. know what will happen if Michael Jordan played in the NBA today or vice versa. If we put LeBron in that NBA from, from the previous time period. So I definitely, like I said, it's hard. It's definitely a hard question. And I think we should get away from comparing errors and stuff like that. But it's also at the same time in contrast, you know, it's great talk. It's dude. great talk though. Yeah. yeah it's not always yeah. happen. It's always. Just, it's unavoidable. Yeah. It's unavoidable. Yeah, I gotta go with MJ man. You know he he got the best he got the best, he got the best kicks in the game too. He got the best kicks in the game. Yeah. You know? yeah. So he changed that he changed that as well. So Yeah for sure. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. yeah. Last question, when the double A G uh, YouTube series coming out in the life of Double A G man. Man, we, man, actually, man, we we working on something right now. Uh, yeah. So working with my boy Ryan, we putting put put together like a little day in life to kind of just mm-hmm. telling the story of all around game and how it was, you know, how I was birthed and how I was born and kind of, you know, what we've been doing and to to kind of just putting, you know, doing our part, you know, putting our piece and you know putting our stamp on on helping, you know the Nashville basketball community and what we've been able to do and what we were about to do. So, um, you know, we just play, we play a small part um, and it always takes a village, you know what I'm saying? So there's more to it than just, you know, double us, double AG. You got so many different entities, like what, even what you guys are doing, mm-hmm. you know what I mean? It's just as important as, as what we do, you know what I mean? But uh, yeah, we got some stuff in the works, man. You know what I mean? We're going to put a little, you know, a little documentary together, man, and kind of just tell our story. Nah, that's dope, man. That's something to look back on too. Even like not now, but you get older, you know, you can be able to look back and like that special moments yeah. that you know you can relive. Just like the last dance. I mean, for sure. Even yeah. like I remember we were talking about it. Like that was so special for me because like I'm a I'm a I like to think of myself. I'm not a basketball historian, but I definitely have done a lot of homework. I've watched like I'm sitting here. Arguing with Nashville, like some old heads like Buck Fitzgerald, mm-hmm. and they're like chewing us out. It's me and him, we were in here with a bunch of old heads, they chewing us out. So I challenged myself, go back, watch some of those games and stuff like that. Yeah. But to see the last dance, man, it was it was just so impactful to see some of the behind the scenes. And like you, people always talk talk about the mindset, but when you literally have it on camera, like in moment of like stuff he's saying to people mm-hmm. not even i mean i think one of the biggest things about michael Jordan, his body language uh, kobe had the same thing it's like they just say you don't look kobe in the eye like it's just Cutthroat. you just have that that thing about you like where it's yeah. just you that guy and everybody know it i mean you got people like larry bird and magic johnson these are staples of basketball that everybody looks up to they like nah Y'all thought we was good. Wait till y'all see this game. Yeah, it, yeah, so. it still didn't. I I got. A, I never seen it live. So gotcha. Okay. I never. Sure. I never had a full effect of Air Jordan. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Like, yeah, I can't get off work Saturday, go home, order some wings, and watch Mike go for fifty five. Mm-hmm. I I don't know. Yeah, so yeah. I never get the full effect. That's why I think. I I think LeBron is better because I seen LeBron come back from three one. Yeah, mm-hmm. I seen Bron do these things live without knowing the outcome. Like if you go watch a YouTube video of Jordan, it's gonna tell you exactly what happened. So it's like kind of takes the edge off of it. Yeah, for yeah me. Same, same for me too. Just like not growing up in that time period um, of like actually getting to watch. What my favorite thing is, I never got to see him bleed. So like I've literally watched like LeBron's entire career. I watched the entire 
Dallas Mavericks series, and I'm literally, I was right like LeBron. What are you doing? Like, why yeah. are you standing in half court? Like, yeah. assert yourself. And I, I got <laughs> literally, you know what I'm saying? Like, we all shit. Like, like, what are you doing? Yeah. Like, you know, I, th- I honestly, on a different tip, I think that 2011 Mavericks team is very disrespected by a lot of people. They, they, have, really they have a lot of hall. They have Jason Kidd, Dirk and Whiskey. I could keep going, but anyway. I've seen LeBron's entire career. Like I said, I've seen the low moments, but I've also seen the 3-1 comeback. Or, I mean, and then, like, some, something else that but you, you don't get rewarded for losing, but just some of the stuff, like, literally to have guys like Matthew Delavadova or Sasha Pavlovich or Anderson Barajals, Daniel Bro. Gibson, playing finals minutes. I'm talking logging 30, 40 minutes. And, like, the team competing. Like, a lot of teams, like, I think LeBron really gets knocked for just making it there. Yep. But of course, like, you get there, you're supposed to win the game. But, like, the first time they played against the Warriors, like, they were up 2-1 with Kevin Love not having played a minute the entire series. And Kyrie went down in game two, I believe. Two. Huh? So, it's like, this guy is that impactful to where even though they just lost two, two all-stars, this guy still has his team competing against... Like, I don't know. It's a lot of stuff, like I said, when it comes to that debate, I can argue that the NBA has shaped to, like, defeat LeBron his entire career from the early years with the Cavs. Um, when he when he knocked down a Chauncey Billups, Richard Hamilton, Tayshaun oh, Prince, Rasheed goodness. Wallace, Ben Wallace, 20. as as a 22, 23-year-old kid, oh, and then man. you form the Celtics, and now he can't get past the Celtics. Yeah. Then he goes to the Heat. You know, then they had they had some rare good battles with the Spurs and stuff like that. But then after that, now you go into the Golden State thing, and now, I mean, you know, they they lost the Golden State the first year with Kyrie and them being down, and then the next year they come back from three one and beat them. And then what Easy happens the following year? Seventy seventy three and nine. We're talking second second best player in basketball in Kevin Durant, in my opinion. And then. He joins a team that just beat them literally in the playoffs. And now this team is stacked up. And like we I felt like for like two of those two of those years, we all knew Golden State. There's no way this unless somebody else makes a crazy super team, there's no way that team loses a finals. Yeah. And so yeah, if KD don't get hurt, they probably went three in a row. Yeah. yeah you know, no so um point. so when it comes to Le- 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 LeBron thing, his impact and stuff like that. That's like just some of my arguments when it comes to stuff like that. No because question. I don't know, like I said, I, I just really think, I mean, LeBron, like you said, has he has made an impact on like when LeBron leaves the city, they don't they don't win fifty games and they don't. one game away from the from the Eastern Conference Finals. They the city's depleted. Like it's it, you go from sixty and twenty to twenty and sixty. Yeah. So he made a lot. He made a lot of players a lot. Of money, mm-hmm, for sure. Period. Yeah. And then, Timothy Mosgov got the. On, I man. remember that summer. Yeah. I was like, yeah. man, he's like, getting paid. They, they get, they was getting bags, man. NFL yeah. players is like, man, I think I chose the wrong sport. Boy, for real. And that team he took, they played this. The, they got swept by the Spurs, but which one? Oh seven. Oh seven. They had no business being in the finals, man. Mm-hmm. Like that team. So even them getting swept, I don't even count that against his record, because like. Come on, man, you, you're matched up against, you know, Duncan and Ginobili and Parker. And Bruce Bowen. Bruce Bowen. Like, they, they, that Cleveland Cavs team was just Had no business on the floor. No business on the floor. So, for him to do that and watching him take down that Detroit team, because that Detroit team was favored to go to the finals. 26 then, points in a row. Come on, man. I mean, that's, that's why I, I say, like, just for him being the best player, um, cause it's because of his impact and because of his ability, no matter what team he's on, you're gonna have a chance to win, no, and it's... you know, and even him winning the championship last year was, well, it's gonna be tough, man. He's in the West, and I'm like, well, everybody, where everybody at now? The they East, now. To, you know, straight out East with it. Yeah, yeah. yeah, so yeah, but but yeah, I mean, they're both for, I mean, they Mount Rushmore, you for know sure. what I mean, and, and, mm-hmm. and so just seeing the players, but you know, before you know, before. Jordan during Jordan's era, and now we're seeing players with Kobe, Braun, like just appreciating the game. It was I I rather say, man, let's just give these guys their roles while they're still mm-hmm. here. Appreciate LeBron, appreciate the Durants of the world. These guys are they getting up there in age now, you know? Yeah, what I mean? for sure. Yeah, but now we got a new. That's one thing I too. had to I had to do with with Kobe, man. So our, our our audio guy, he's a very big Kobe Bryant fan. We used to always go head to head about. 
had like LeBron versus Kobe. And like it was one of those things I always respected his game, but it, it, it wasn't until late in his career I was like, no, nah, hold up, don't nah, nah, it ain't over, is it? Like, nah, I still wanna watch you. I might not like you like that, I'm still a LeBron game, yeah. a LeBron guy, but like I didn't want to see him go, and I feel like it's going to be the same way with people like LeBron, people like Kevin Durant, man, because their talents is just so, I mean. Kobe like, oh. went out different, though. Yeah. yeah though, man. That's what it go out. Yeah. Shit, man. 60, 60, 60, man, 60 piece, man. That's I was man. watching that game with Kevin and Dylan and them, and I was, I remember just watching it. It was just like. I was at work. I was hot. I couldn't watch it. Kobe, yeah. man, different, man. God, man, God rest his soul, man. Kobe was being different. That's yeah. why he was. He's one of my favorites, man, because, like I said, he's kind of just cut from the same cloth as Mike, man, but just, but Kobe was a killer, man. He was, he was a dog. <laughs> he's a dog. Put you on the spot. Why do you think, I always found, like, very odd, why doesn't Kobe get that recognition, like, in that conversation? Like, I see some lists and stuff, like, they leave him out of the top ten players of all time and stuff. Yeah, like, right. I, 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 I go ahead. No, you go ahead. I think because he played with Shaq. Yeah. Mm-hmm. He got mm-hmm. three of those things with Shaq. The most dominant big man of all time. Of all time, yeah. 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 And, and I think, too, to add to that, um, the fact that he, he didn't win a, a MVP. You know what I mean? Which, the year's Nash won. Oh, Kobe was supposed to come on. Like, <laughs> I, like, I, like, I, yeah, I, we like, talked about this at work of the hell. To this day, man, you know. And child, Nash won my favorite point goal. Mm, for sure. Uh, but yeah, Kobe was supposed to win. He's supposed to win. That year, man. I and that's but that's a great question. I don't know why he isn't revered amongst you know in that in those type of conversations, yeah. which I feel like he should be. Yeah. Um, and, but I think you know again, you know when you look at the total body of work, you know I'm pretty sure people are going to hold it against him that he didn't have any you know NBA MVPs and and they hope for whatever reason. I to me, you know that's a whole. That's a whole nother discussion. That's a whole nother topic. He could have easily won quite a few in my yeah. opinion. But, um, That's like the year LeBron. I mean, LeBron had an interview. He was talking about, like, the year LeBron's supposed to win Defensive Player of the Year, Marcus Saul wins it, but he was second team all defense. Like, exactly. What, like, what sense you does that make? How is he on second team? But he's the best defensive, defensive player. player. That makes There's absolutely no sense. No sense. Exactly. I definitely... Kobe averaged 36 and like 6, and Nash averaged like 16 and 10 and won MVP that year. Yeah. And I think that was the stretch when I think when Kobe was going bananas, he had like eight, nine games straight with like 40 plus, mm-hmm. and he yeah. was going yeah. stupid. And, I, and, and for him not to win MVP, it was just. I- yeah, it's crazy. I've always been curious about that. Like after he retired, and mm-hmm. I started to, I always watch like these all time lists, especially when it's like the top guy, like top players making them. And I'm like, this dude went for 81 points in the game. Like, and not even just that. It's just Kobe, one of those players. Like when you watch him, like you are literally like in awe. Yeah. Like this mm-hmm. dude is like he's just different. It ain't a lot of people. Like, even though he was like. Kind of a replica of Jordan. He still had like a own unique like like style about himself. And I don't know. I've just always been very curious about like people don't give him like that respect. Yeah. I feel like as like one of the top players of all time because I definitely think. I mean, he was a pest on the defensive end of the oh, floor man. too. Like, yeah. man, he picking um, Kobe picking up ninety four feet too. Yeah, man. So. <laughs> Kobe was that's just, he's different. Kobe was different, man. He's definitely different. So, so. Well, all right, man, we'll go ahead and wrap it up. We appreciate you coming out again on the Let's Be Real podcast, man. Um, like I said, it was, a, it was definitely a, it was a great opportunity to meet you and to, to have you speak to some of the youth. And just, I mean, just the topics you spoke on in general. And we definitely, I know, me personally, I admire you as a man, what you do for appreciate the city. That. I mean, we we talking about all these we, these pro players, but they don't know you. You training kids that's in eighth, ninth, and I mean, kids at VA that are in fourth and fifth grade, man, yeah. the whole totality of like what you do. I mean, Nashville really pre- appreciates you. I just want to let you know that. I appreciate y'all, man. Thank y'all for having me, man. And uh, man, I mean, I'll just keep, man, a big, you know, big fans, big support to y'all podcast, man. And appreciate y'all having me. Just keep building and keep growing, man. So, you know, I'm going to definitely be, you know, in tune, man, checking out all y'all episodes. Appreciate it, so Y'all check them out, man. Support, support. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Doing this for the city, man. Yes, sir.
while we on that topic, man, whoever y'all want us to interview next, man, just let us know. You can comment on the video. You can tag them on our Instagram, whoever it is, like I said. But we appreciate y'all tuning in, man. Let's be real. Let's be real. Let's be real. Yeah. I am not worried about what you've been talking and how you boys feel.